wooden table um, with you and and uh, Celine, who I didn't know who neither of you were at the time. Um, and you were teasing me about uh, playing punk guitar. Yeah. And then I saw Celine uh, staring at me, and she kind of was burning her face, uh, the image of her face, into my mind. And uh, yeah, that, that's pretty much the the shared portion that I re- that I remember having uh, with you. W- what did you remember about that? Um, well, uh, from my from my perception, um, I was uh, sitting in this huge uh, empty warehouse, and there were a bunch of people moving about as if they were setting up for a concert or something like that. Um, and uh, I didn't recognize any of the people. I didn't recognize you. Yeah. Uh, I didn't recognize Celine. Uh, I was not lucid. Yeah. But uh, I had my arm around her, and I was leaning back, uh, like, c- cockily, like I always do when I have a hot girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, I was teasing some guy about playing um, Guitar Hero. And I was like, yeah, I bet all the all the virtual fans really love you in Guitar Hero because <laughs> you just kick ass at that game, man, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, we were playing cards at this rickety card table. Yeah. I don't remember what game, and I was uh, drinking a beer and smoking a cigarette. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and... You know, the funny thing about that dream is that somebody uh, in the sub forum, uh, I'm not going to say who she is, obviously, but um, she had a dream synchronicity with me that night, and she actually had a dream about being in a warehouse or some sort of rave or party and was dancing uh, with people. So I think wow. I'm thinking a whole oh, shitload what? of us were there or something. Yeah, I just remembered there was someone else at the table, but I didn't recognize them. Was it a yeah? Okay. I don't remember the gender either. No. But yeah, so I, I re- so I remember else. I remember someone else too. Um, but it was a guy. He had kind of brown hair. Uh, not like you, but um, yeah. But yeah, there was someone there, and I had a feeling that he was your friend, or that you knew him. That um, yeah. That's 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 all I can tell. It's really interesting. Yeah. Oh, you know, I think that was probably Spike then. Weird. Yeah, it may have been. Because um, I remember later on, you said in that same dream, um, there were a bunch of ravens and um, someone that was like yeah. consuming someone else's energy, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. Um, and, you know, from your waking life perception, uh, you perceived it as something different, but my interpretation of that is that it was, um, Spike and I were, like, fighting nearby or outside because, um, in dreams, you know, I have different kinds of magic, and one of my types is summoning, and sometimes I will summon uh, an army of ravens, and, um, Spike's a vampire, and he just bites people and sucks their energy. Yeah, but... When I said ravens, I was talking about the the subgroup, the sub forum. Uh, oh. Yeah. Was, uh, yeah. But I probably really shouldn't say t- too much more um, about that. Yeah. But I did have uh, one last synchronicity that I'd like to talk about, and then we'll I guess we'll open it up to questions if people have them. Um, was uh, I think I may have met. Uh, the death the fire um as told about uh in the art of dreaming by uh carlos castaneda and yeah uh, yeah have you read that uh have you read about the death of the death i have I, i'm reading the art of dreaming right now i think i'm in the second or third chapter oh okay well you'll read about the death the fire but anyway um uh i was having this dream that i was watching this movie and I was really into the movie, and it, this actually kind of reminds me of what you said: of when a real person enters the dream, they don't change. You can try to ignore them, but they won't change, right? And this is exactly what happened to me. Um, um, I had this, uh, yeah, I was watching this movie, 
And then suddenly this young girl in a bikini plopped down in front of me. And like she's way, way, way too young for me to be interested in her, right? Like, like she's like 14 or something. And I'm 24. I'm like, uh, no way, girl, that's not going to happen, right? And she's all smiling at me with bright eyes, right? And so I'm ignoring her and I'm watching the movie. And she, she keeps inching closer to me and rubbing her ass up against me and, you know, basically trying to seduce me. And I'm like, oh my God, will you just stop? I'm trying to watch my freaking movie here, right? <laughs> and, and then she she comes up to me and just starts starts kissing me and and I felt like she was like just literally sucking me right into her and I could feel her all around me and she was changing the dream um, but then I I don't know I just didn't have enough dreaming attention that I just woke up you know, mm-hmm. right away and then so. I, I didn't I didn't post that dream right away because I didn't want or I left the part about the girl out because I didn't want p- people to think I was a pedophile or some sort of weird yeah thing. yeah so I understand I, I left I left that part out but then I was on Lone Wolf's forum uh, on one of the public parts and they were talking about uh, the death the fire and stuff like that and a friend of mine from that forum he he posted he said recently the death the fire came into my dream posing as a 14 year old girl trying to seduce me she then changed yeah. the, she then changed the dream and we walked uh, around in a city and offered uh, friendship to me and I think I like her kind of crazy and I read that dream I'm like holy shit that's wow. that's that's the same person that I met and so yeah. I, and he was in chat so I went into chat and I, I talked to him uh, at length about my dream and kind of compare notes and we both came to the con- con- to the conclusion that yeah I met the same person and that's the death to fire um, as told about in Castaneda's uh, book and she'd actually told him that that that's uh, who she was you know so, wow so I, I and the death to fire is a man the death to fire is a man and an ancient man. An a, a very ancient man, and there's a there's a very good reason why he changes his form into a, a woman. It was uh, uh, one time he was uh, he was trapped in a in a realm for a very long time um, by uh, you you know about the inorganic beings. I'm pretty sure you you've gotten to that part yeah. in the book, right? Well, the inorganic beings trapped the death of fire in his realm or in their realm, and he cannot escape, but those particular type of inorganic beings didn't, they were female in nature, so they had no use for female energy. So the death, the fire uh, basically got enough awareness to, to, change, to change his form into a female, and once he was given off this female energy, he was spit out, and uh, he basically came back to earth but he was losing his energy so what he would do was uh approach the sorcerers at that time and um it, like this is very far-fetched i don't even know if i believe this myself i'm just repeating what i heard uh what i read and what the death of fire did was he approached the sorcerers that at that time and taught them you know ancient ancient sorcery tricks in exchange for some of their energy and and apparently, the death of fire kind of carries on that way to this day. Um, so, and yeah, it's estimated that he, she, is thousands of years old. But I don't know. It's pretty far fetched. But I don't know. Uh, yeah, to me, nothing is far fetched anymore. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Uh, I don't know how far does the rabbit hole go. <laughs> uh, you know, we have just. Um, only fell through, and right now we're just in the room where you can change your size by drinking potions, and that's all, that's as far as we've really gotten. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So anyway, <laughs> um, I think it'd be a good idea to take a, another break. We've almost taken up two hours, and so for the last ten minutes we're going to get to a couple questions, and I, I'm going to keep this two hours max, so I'm pausing the recording right now. All right. Okay, and we're back uh, from our break. 
Um, actually, I think it's <laughs> Nathan hosting, so take it away. All right. Hey, uh, uh, welcome back to the third segment of our uh, Dream Views Dream Sharing podcast. I just wanted to add one little thing um, I just thought of. 